This is the veteran. Okay. Everybody. Everybody got that message and uh, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the Veterans Commission of Weathersfield. It's Wednesday, March 9th, a little after six, um, meeting by Zoom. So welcome everybody. Um, I want to call to order. I wanted to start our meeting in a way that I, I hope you will all uh, feel comfortable just by recognizing the incredible bravery of the people of Ukraine. Um, you know, we are many of us veterans and in Ukraine right now, there are people who are earning their veterans patches who never thought they were even in the military, right? You've seen pictures of women learning, you know, older women learning how to use weapons, people making Molotov cocktails, people standing in front of tanks and trying to stop convoys with their bare hands. Uh, it is just incredible. And so I just wanted to start this meeting by recognizing uh, our comrades in arms who are in Ukraine right now uh, fighting for their own right to choose their own self-government. Um, well done. Public, sir. Cool. public comment is the uh, first agenda item. And uh, we have Officer Flores here on representing uh, Weathersfield Police Department. Welcome. And uh, I guess technically you're a member of the public. Would you like to say anything? No, just uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, you guys letting me part of, be part of the, this meeting. And um, I spoke with uh, Chief Medina today, and uh, we're hoping that at some point we can meet in person and we can uh, have conversations of what we can do in the future for veterans in Weathersfield and all throughout. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Great to have you. And uh, yeah, we too look forward to meeting in person. Uh, I think we're, we'll be talking about that later on in this meeting. Uh, letters and announcements. Any letters and announcements? Taylor had a few items. Uh, and Jennifer, you sound, you look like you had something you wanted to add? Oh. Mm -mm. oh. Nope. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I did get a, um, I don't know if everybody got the uh, bills for review through the Committee on Veterans Affairs. I had emailed that to everyone. Yes. And that there Thank was you. a public hearing. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Ryan Biggs is not here with us today, but uh, it sounded like he was going to write a uh, letter uh, supporting some of those measures as well, which was great. So uh, um, good. <laughs> he's a very active town council member and, and much appreciated. Um, any other public comments? I mean, excuse me, letters or announcements? All right, hearing none, we will move on to the uh, minutes. And uh, thanks to Sandra and Mary both for collaborating on the minutes from our February 9th meeting. Uh, may I have a, a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, this is Rick, motion to accept. All righty, thank you, Rick. And a second, okay. Jennifer seconds. All right, any discussion on the minutes, any corrections or amendments? Oh, they were excellent. All right, hearing none. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, all in favor of accepting the minutes from February 9th meeting, uh, please signify by either saying aye or raising your hand in front of the camera. <laughs> aye. aye. Thank you very much. The minutes are approved. Awesome. So we're um, moving into the action items and uh, now, my hope is not necessarily to race through this meeting, but we do have another meeting coming up tonight for those involved in Memorial Day. So uh, we'll try to get through our agenda and maybe have a little break between the meetings so people can grab uh, dinner or Mary can drink some water or whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, martini. Is, uh, <laughs> a martini, right, yeah, maybe. So Memorial Day Parade update. Um, I guess, Mary, you would probably be the most knowledgeable person to share on that uh, for those committee members that were not part of the meeting that was held last month. Okay, so we're looking good financially in that um, due to some um, requests 
that we got and donations for the Memorial Day Parade, as well as the $5,000 annually that the town council has given us. Uh, we're looking in good, um, that money actually also goes for the Veterans uh, Day thing, like all the cemetery flags and the like. So we are starting the season with over, or starting our planning with about $8,000, um, which is a, a, a great way to start. Um, we've got the uh, theme was chosen as the Disabled American Veterans Anniversary. Last year was their 100th anniversary. We chose it as our theme. We did not have a parade. So now we're gonna celebrate 101 years. Uh, we're um, currently looking for parade marshals. Um, Rick Newell was able to get us a speaker for the cemetery um, portion um, from the DAB. Um, actually, I should probably say the parade is at 9 a.m. stepping off from the Department of Motor Vehicles on Saturday, May, May 28th. It's kind of important. Um, so we're in the process of gathering of the list and updating it because we haven't had a parade in two years of all of the town um, organizations and things like that in order to send invitations, updating our dignitaries for those who are newly in office. Um, expanding so that we, we kept it as a very local dignitaries for the past couple of years. So we'll be inviting um, like our state senators and the like that serve in Washington that we haven't been able to invite for a couple of years. And uh, we've been lucky enough to have Senator Blumenthal join us um, several times. So it would be nice if we can get him back. Um, yeah, so uh, John Cassio is working with the Board of Ed and the schools to bring back the uh, did have the essay contest last year and the winners were able to come to the ceremony at the community center and read their essays and they were phenomenal. So they're gonna do that again this year. Um, yeah, so we're moving forward uh, in as much as we can and we're really looking forward to, you know, having that old Weathersfields normalcy uh, of, of a nice parade. And I think we've got a good group working on it and our meeting is at 7.30. I invited the entire commission. It is, um, it's a courtesy invite and I'm gonna continue to invite you all. Don't feel that you have to attend. Um, again, it's, it's a courtesy because the Veterans Commission is so uh, you know, involved in all of the events. And this is, um, you know, it's one of the big ones that we do. And that's my update. Great, thank you so much. Um, I think it's a it's like a well-oiled machine, even though we haven't done it in two years. I mean, you've got everything well organized and all the, I want to say the usual suspects, but the people who have usually contributed seem to be jumping right in and, oh, I'll do this and I'll do that. So um, uh, if there's anything that comes back from the committee that, you know, we, we need additional help with, please do ask. And the part of this committee's charge from town council is to uh, oversee the Memorial Day Parade and the Veterans Day ceremonies, although we have very capable independent committees that, that do that. So we're, our oversight is loose, but I, I just included it on the agenda because I feel like it's important for this com commission to stay aware of the plans. And if, heaven forbid, there was a, a major problem, we would uh, try to help solve it. So thanks for that. Any questions for Mary before we move on? Okay. Um, spring newsletter. Frank and Jennifer have been working hard on topics and sent us a nice read ahead with uh, some really articles already written, it looks like. So would uh, one of you like to introduce this and, and talk about it? Sure. I, I can I can start and, and then Jennifer can backfill all the hard work that she did. But So we, we, we hope that you've had a chance to review the articles. Uh, there's there's two things about them that I that I like on the list is that they're very short and brief and that means we can put more on the newsletter. The only thing we'll have to do is to add more contact information, which is not a lot. So uh, there were there were three issues, and I want to start before we get into the guts of the newsletter that uh, we had an opportunity had on. Uh, one was um, the First Church of Christ I was having a month of work repairs from June 26th to July 22nd. Uh, I called uh, the First Church, and I spoke to Assistant Pastor Todd Willard. And I explained to him that our newsletter probably wasn't going to come out until early May at, 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 the, at the very earliest, and I asked him how that might affect the 
list of people already signing up. And he agreed that uh, it might be too late for the uh, spring newsletter to be able to provide uh, benefits, but he, uh, we agreed that we would talk at the end of April, early May. And in, in fact, there were still dollars available, then uh, we would put it in the newsletter. So he and I are going to contact at the uh, end of uh, March, early April, to see if it's still worthwhile putting in an article about the um, home repairs for older citizens, including veterans. Uh, I would also add that he is very interested in what we're doing with veterans, and we might have yet another uh, town ally to um, work into our our committee meetings and and uh, partner with the First Church on things like that. Any questions on that? No, that makes perfect oh, sense. Oh, absolutely. I just. Terribly excited, really, really excited. And those of you who know the First Church know that they are very community involved. <clears throat> Our daughters went to First Church pre-K. Uh, uh, hmm, how long ago? Forty years? <laughs> hmm, ouch! Ouch! What happened? Okay, so the second point was uh, on the um, um, VFW newsletter about burial benefits. I dug into that very deeply, going right down to the websites that were referred to. And what I found out was that these are not VA approved or endorsed benefits. Uh, when you go into the website called uh, vetsburialbenefits.com, you, what you immediately find is Globe Life Insurance Company, Neptune Society, which provides additional death benefits, the Lincoln Heritage Funeral Advantage, uh, the com uh, interesting enough called dd214direct.com, uh, and none of these, none, uh, and one called Dignity Memorial, which was on the newsletter. These are all private, for-profit companies that provide for additional cost, extra death benefits, like a better coffin, a better grave. And uh, Jennifer and I and, and uh, Doug talked about this and felt that it was too commercial to uh, send out to our newsletter recipients, that it would create a... Mm, wrong message because they were all for-profit services. So, Doug, uh, uh, so uh, Rick, I, I commend that you provided it to us, but it's just one of those things where it's not VA, VFW or DOD or Veterans Administration. Well, that, that was sent out to uh, Frank. That was sent out to all VFW members. I just it yeah. just caught my yeah. eye. No, I no, no. I, that, that might be beneficial, but uh, in reading it, you know, it, it gave. Uh, some of the funeral homes to contact and everything, yeah, and I just yeah. thought it would be of interest. But if you guys checked into it, I'm I'm perfectly fine with it. I, I wouldn't want our member, our, our veterans, to to think that we were endorsing this by publishing it. Uh, it would get us into uh, uh, yeah, in the wrong direction. Yeah, a legal okay, thing, good. right? Okay, but I all wanted you to understand that. Uh, the other thing uh, was uh, what Trisha uh, Trish came up with was ID Me. It's a valid company. Uh, they provide uh, protection, uh, ID uh, protection um, uh, for internet, uh, and it's certainly a worthwhile company. But it has it, it serves any industry, any individual, alumni, students, uh, government employees, exclusive discounts, which I think Trish mentioned was. And I looked at the military discounts, and, and and they're nice. They're really good. But again, this is not a VA uh, DOD or um, uh, other government organization uh, that's uh, endorsed. So I, I feel uncomfortable in the same uh, venue that I don't want our veterans thinking that it's government-sponsored or government-endorsed. And I, I talked to Doug, Doug and Jennifer about this. They're of the same conclusion, but I wanted to make sure that we all understood that it's a good company, it has worthwhile benefits, but I would not want our veterans to think that we as the Veterans Committee or the town was endorsing this company. Comments on that? Yeah, Frank, just to, to add to what you said in the past, and I, I can't remember if it was Kathy Bagley or, or Sal when we first got started, but it made it really clear to us that we are an extension of town government, and therefore, as an extension of town government, we cannot uh, be perceived to be endorsing for-profit entities. We can provide information about government entities and nonprofits, I think, as long as we make it clear that it's a nonprofit. 
but not for profit entities. So they'll they'll have to pay for their own advertising, I guess. Correct. Doesn't mean they're not good companies. It just means that we have to be careful. Right. So I just wanted you to all understand that that uh, uh, I was using my Intel uh, analysis uh, skills to go into that, and it was very informative. And you know, we'll continue to do that. And you should not uh, look upon this as something that you don't want to suggest. Uh, we are capable of, uh, of vetting it and, and and making our own decisions as a committee. So. That leaves the two lists that I will generously uh, uh, offer that Jennifer has put together in a very good fashion, Jennifer. Uh, and uh, so I, I first thing I want to ask is, is there, before we prioritize it, let me just preempt that by saying we want to put things that are town first and actionable first and then informational second. So, and again, uh, extending the contact information, but was there a, uh, any comments from the committee on the topics that we've suggested? Okay, I'm hearing that we did a fabulous job here. I, I was very I'm impressed. Is, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm thinking this is ARCOM level awards. Yeah. Right, right, at least the Army types. Double your salaries or something, yeah. It looks yeah. fine to me. Yeah, Jennifer, I thought you did a fabulous job. Oh, thank fabulous you. Fabulous job. Thank I'm, you. I'm just, and, and, I th and what I like about it is even though it's a summary, there's a lot on here that we might be able to get on. Now, I don't think we'll be able to get it on uh, one sheet, but certainly two sheets. Yeah. Uh, so, so what did you all think about the length of it? Because there's a lot on here, and I like that there's a lot on here, and I think it's like... The minimum information you need to do something or not do something, and if you want to do something, here's the call to action. Here's who to contact. I really like that rather than long, long paragraphs of stuff. Did anybody feel the same way as I did? I don't all speak at once. <laughs> no, no it's fine. I agree with you. I liked it. Maybe we should go to four times a year, Jennifer. What do you think? Yeah, right. Sure. Why not? Yeah. There's a lot of there's it. So much, I mean, there's I really so had. Much yeah, I had to skip through it. I, I just, I just noticed though that my, um, the last one, uh, veterans at risk for homelessness. I didn't, yeah. I didn't offer any contact information or what. To no, do. no. We'll, 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 we'll fix that. We'll fix yeah. it. You and I will okay. go through that. But I like the fact that we got a lot of information and uh, and hopefully don't have to go to a third page. Uh, but again, the, it was it was enough information to make a decision, do something with it, and yeah. follow up with a contact or move on. Um, as as a sidebar to that, Mary, did you find out was there an additional cost to producing a third page? I uh, 100% forgot. Um, but I can tell you that, uh, the community center sends out, uh, like five pages worth of, in, with their contracts and it does not cost anything more. I didn't weigh our thing. So I, uh, I'll have to send an email to everybody. I'll remind myself, well, um, but I'm I pretty sure you're going to, yeah, yeah. I think if we can get this out of two page, and I think we will, that's fine. But it begs the question, and I'm just going to throw this out because I just thought of it, and so there's no preparation in it, is that at some point, perhaps at the planning meeting would be the best venue, we should think about if there's funds available, perhaps doing it three times a year. Just throwing that out, no comments necessary at this time. But this kind of, there is so much information in the VA brochure that we can put out. Mm -hmm. It would. It, it's hard to decide what goes in and what goes out. So I just want that to leave that for a, a discussion item on our um, retreat planning. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Mary. I should have said in letters and announcements, um, but it didn't it hit me. We had a very generous donation from Jennifer Glick to the um, committee. <laughs> That's all you didn't right. say you wanted it anonymous. I know, so. I know, I didn't, I didn't. Um, I didn't catch that name. Who was it? <laughs> uh, wow. a, a very generous donation specific to the Veterans Commission. Uh, she did say to be used for the newsletter or any event sponsored by the uh, Veterans Commission. 
So I, I did want to let you know that this very generous donation um, will get pretty far in looking at, at another newsletter. How many years worth of newsletters will it pay for? Uh, you know, we'll see. If we got a third one out this year, it would be fabulous. And I will go back to our earliest conversations about the newsletter where I offered to make a donation to it. And uh, I will be glad to do that as well if it means we can have a third newsletter. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about that. I also wanted to mention that um, I did, uh, the, the Recreation and Parks Department did put back in the request for, uh, I think it was, I, I'm not sure if it's 500 or a thousand dollars for the Veterans Commission. Um, again, this this is a very preliminary uh, budget presentation that we did to the town manager, who then picks it apart and brings it to the council. So uh, I just did want to let you know that I didn't need a specific request from you, Doug, the way I you did the previous year. But since Thank we're just you. putting it back <laughs> in, um, right, right. Said we could put it in there and just say, look, it was there last year with this request and it was cut. So um, okay. I do want you to know I we're going forward with that. And I probably won't know until May when they pass the budget what what yeah. is going, what's happening with that. But I, I did want to put that in as well. I'm sorry. Well, uh, thank you, Jennifer, for the donation. And thank you, Mary, for making sure we all knew about it and, and for doing the budget. Uh, I think there's support at town council. The question is whether our budget, our little piece of the budget proposal, which is little compared to the whole town budget, uh, gets to town council, right? Because there's levels, I realize, in between. So, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, boy, Jennifer, you're setting a great example for the rest of us to step up. So, um I, I really debated the anonymous side of it because I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, but I felt like, you know, the commission needs to know who's making donations or, you know, what's coming in. So I let it go. Yeah. Yeah. We know who to address the uh, thank you letter to. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we just send it to Zorro. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Um, just uh, on the newsletter part to kind of bring that to closure, I think you know, based on the material you have here, Frank and Jennifer, um, and knowing that usually at our first page of the newsletter also has the contact people, you know, on the commission and town staff. Uh, and then I assume we're going to have an announcement about the Memorial Day parade plans in the newsletter that I think you've got uh, two sheets of paper or four sides well filled. And if there's blank space, then you can always increase the font because remember our target audience often have, uh, includes people with visual impairments um, such as myself. So uh, 12 point font is much easier to read than 10 point font when you're uh, <laughs> struggling with that, I think. I so, agree. For those of us who need trifocals now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, good point, Doug. Uh, uh, Jennifer great. and I will continue and work on it, and next month we should have a, a full draft ready for uh, publication. Okay. Wonderful. Jennifer, well, thank, thank you both. So much. Thank you. Um, so the next agenda item is, it's either going to be moot if we have a third newsletter, or we can talk about it. Um, we, we talked about this a little bit at the last meeting. Mary provided some input from the parks and, and rec department in terms of thinking through timing and days and all that, which was very helpful. Um, and then we kind of decided that we'd talk about it at the retreat. So I started thinking afterwards, like, oh, well, how would we publicize this? Um, one of the important ways we'd publicize such an event would be through our newsletter. Um, and I think if we wait till our retreat to decide on this, and we only have two newsletters, one going out in May and one going out in, in November, that a decision to host this and, and have it ready to go would be too late for the May newsletter and OBE by November, because we hope to have it before November 11th, presumably, uh, if we're gonna do it maybe this summer or early fall or late spring, whatever. So I wanted to bring it back up then. However, if Frank, you're thinking of a third newsletter 
and you said, yeah, we're going to do the next newsletter is going to be in July, then, you know, maybe that's a different thing. I don't know. Um, but, but wanted to just toss that back out there, not to keep rehashing old ground, but do we, do we want to rethink that and, and maybe talk about it and, and try to get some dates set up now uh, and then begin working on planning that? Or should we just wait till the April um, April retreat and, and hope we can get it into the next newsletter? Uh, okay, uh, just, just quickly off the top of my head, uh, after, right after Labor Day is always a great time. We can work out it during the summer. Just the fact that we take a summer hiatus, you know, we're we're never really off duty, are we? Okay. So if you're talking about I'm talking about a, a third newsletter, I would suggest right after Labor Day, but the still is two more months before um, uh, Veterans Day. If you think the timing of that is too late, then we could come up with something in July. I mean, it's it, believe me, uh, Jennifer and I can put us something. We could probably do it monthly, right, Jennifer? Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Doug, I, I think that whatever t I mean, I I I'm throwing out Labor Day because that's a good time, but I don't think it really matters. Okay. For the information briefing. Uh, I'm sorry, what, it doesn't matter. It, 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 when when it, it could be July, August, or or right after Labor Day for a third newsletter, if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, or we could. You know, just thinking out loud because I, I don't have a specific proposal. If if we said, hey, we're going to do this event in the summer or late uh, summer or early fall, we could send out an announcement right. that has one side of the sheet of paper is the announcement. The other side is a very abbreviated newsletter. <clears throat> and it's, you know, so it's not like you guys have to generate a full blown newsletter uh, necessarily. So just something to think about. It could be using our mail, it's the same mailing list and everything. Because we have, as I think Mary said, somewhere between 900 and 1,000 veteran addresses on the mailing list. And that's a wonderful way to communicate this information directly to the veterans. So I'd hate to miss the newsletter for our own event. I mean, that just seems like really poor planning. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll hold you to it then. We'll do something, a newsletter sometime before whatever we plan to do. Is that <laughs> right. a consensus? All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, mm -hmm. Jennifer? Absolutely. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Sure, okay. yes, sir. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> we got it. All right. Um, so we don't need to talk about that anymore. The retreat planning, um, just put a draft agenda out there for the retreat. And there was a second page, but I think it probably ended up on the backside and didn't get in the scan or something. So uh, that's just so that people remember what the goals were for our 2020, 21, uh, year. So we can be thinking about those as we head into the retreat, cause that'll be a topic. Um, were the retreat, the agenda look okay to everybody? Um, anything we should be adding? The briefing should the briefing as, is that incorporated into some of the um, items that you have here, or is that a separate discussion? Well, I kind of thought it could be part of the develop the 2022-23 goals, oh. you know, that that would all be, you know, uh, third newsletter, the, the veterans briefing, any other, you know, actions that we wanted to, we could be, there might be other things people bring to the meeting too, that could be folded into that. Um, if you feel like it should be a standalone item, we can definitely make it a standalone item. It's you know uh, glad to glad to put it on there. Would anybody We're like to do? The, <laughs> well, all right. Um, would anybody like to do the icebreaker? Like, come prepared to lead a you know ten minute opportunity for us to all get to know each other better. No one likes to call it an icebreaker, but you know, some kind of a team builder, <laughs> team building activity. Yes, exactly. If not, I will come up with something suitably lame. Uh, but uh, if one of you has something better, <laughs> I think I have a book on such things, but I, I'd have to go looking for it. 
<laughs> do, do I hear you volunteering? No, I'm not volunteering. Oh, oh, let me look. Let me look at the book, and then I'll consider right. volunteering. Well, it's not. It's not urgent. Research the book. That's what you're volunteering. What's yeah. that? I'm going to do a little research yeah. to find the book. Okay. Right, find right. the book. <laughs> I'll come up. I'll come up with something unless Jennifer has a better idea or or anybody else. It's it's open. Okay, good. I I don't hear any uh, complaints about the agenda. We'll add the briefing, the uh, info briefing to the agenda, and uh, have that for people um, when we gather and then. For the retreat, Mary, I think you had already said you had reserved the fireside room for that yes. Saturday. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. That is uh, a very nice space. And we talked about whether it had to be kind of a public meeting. And Kathy, I think Kathy Bagley said no, it did not. Oh. Really? Oh, because, wow. Because it's considered a workshop. So she said of a commission. Okay. We didn't have to look at a public meeting. Okay. Well, um, I checked there we go. Back. Yeah. Good. Um, thank you for that. Then that makes life a little easier. But if people want to come up, you know, obviously our liaisons would be welcome. If Ken Lesser wanted to come again, as he did in the past, or uh, anybody else, Officer Flores, if you wanted to attend, you'd be certainly more than welcome to, to join in. Um, Good to have uh, different perspectives around the table, I think. So, okay. And we're breezing right along. The student representative update, I think after our last meeting, I did speak a little more at length with um, Diana Adamson. Uh, and I agreed to kind of put together a draft job description <clears throat> for her so that they could take it to their whatever group is reorganizing their student service work. So um, kind of do that. Maybe I'll have it, try to have that for the next meeting. So we can all look at it before it goes to them. And she did not have a specific timeline, but I think the idea in general is that we would have a student representative or two who would be joining us in the fall. Uh, and then would serve with us through the academic year and their term would end, you know, in June when the end of the school year occurs. And then the next fall, we might get a new representative. So it would be kind of a, a cycle like that. Any questions or thoughts on the student rep? Yeah, I have a suggestion. Uh, Ken Lesser does a uh, leadership program. It might be an idea to see if, uh, Maybe we get two of his students out of his program. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Rick. Um, Diane and Ken have been talking and she's uh, aware of his program. And, and she and I talked a little bit also about maybe using his program as a pipeline. Um, our hope is to find a student or, or two who have some veteran connection, you know, maybe a veteran in the family or an interest in serving in the military themselves or some motivation to be part of the group um, as well. So we'll, we'll see what they come up with, but uh, maybe we can add that to the position description. Just, you know, this is a great opportunity for someone with these interests. I agree. Okay, good. All right, well, we have breezed through this agenda. <clears throat> Thank you all for making it so easy um, and coming so well prepared. The, uh, Next item is commission member comments. This is where people get to voice their thoughts or concerns. Does anybody have any to share? Can we have a live meeting next month? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Frank. We're supposed to, we're supposed to talk about that. Yes. Um, uh, Mary suggested that we wanted to make sure the group was uh, in favor of that before we just did it. So, um, are you all in favor of, of going live? Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Rick, are you well, okay with that? I think, I, I, I yeah, think we should suggest that masks are optional. Yeah. I was at a live meeting uh, last week of the Sons of Italy at the Senior Center. So, yeah, I'm in favor of it. Good. Well, I we think have we can four. Say masks, masks are optional. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think, 
you know, that's the world we're moving to because people always have the latitude to wear a mask if they want to. I mean, they always have. Like, we don't need to give people permission to wear a mask. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you. And thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> it was, I had it in my notes and I was so excited about moving through the agenda that we, I skipped right over it. So, uh, I good. One, I have one last little comment. The uh, town council changed their rules of, and procedures to give council members the option to call in to a meeting, even though they're uh. live. So hmm. I don't know how that's going to work, and we will be looking at that to see. You know, I it's not something I suggest we offer to our commission right away because I don't know the technology that's going to be used to do that, or whether it has to be out of the council chambers. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to let you know that uh, for those of you who it might be easier to call in, there may actually be the option to do a hybrid in the future mm. okay put that out yeah well let's um kind of approach the next meeting until we hear otherwise uh, as a in-person meeting with with masks optional um and the same presumably for our retreat in april as well and uh good any other commission member comments that was a that was a very good one i have one other um Tilga, i wanted to ask if um I know Joanna Rolden Rivera from the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs wanted to come to speak. Now that we're meeting um, live, um, would you like me to invite her to come in April or May to the meeting? Yeah, I, I think that's fine. Um, I was kind of thinking we would just hold her for the veterans information session and have her come talk to all veterans that are interested, unless she mm -hmm. feels like she has a targeted message just for us, or if we wanted to somehow preview her message, what do you think? I mean, whatever you decide, I, I know that she's been wanting to come and, and then, um, you know, because of COVID, she wasn't able to, so but whatever, okay. the, you know, whatever you decide. Great thing might be a, a really good time or you know, figure it in that way somehow. To, to the veterans briefing? Right, to yeah. form a lot more people. Yeah, Chris, would you maybe let her know we're thinking of doing something, you know, a little larger scale with more veterans present in um, either, we don't know exactly, late summer, early fall, and that we'd, we'd mm -hmm. love to have her come for that when we get ready to do it? Sure, I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to get in touch with her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And then um, hopefully at our retreat, we'll at least talk about some tentative dates. And then I think what will probably end up happening is because you're the contact with a couple of those presenters, that we might ask you to reach back out to some of them and say, you know, are you available on these dates um, at these times to come talk? Uh, and then. Uh, sure. We'd have to, you know, we'll pick the date that everybody can make it <laughs> and then go with that kind of a thing. Sure, that'd be great. I'd be glad okay. to reach out to them. Yeah, thank you. No, I think that's good. It would be perhaps a better use of their time as well. Not that it's not great to talk to the commission, but I, I like the idea of addressing a larger group of veterans um, mm -hmm. so that they're getting this information. The last presenter was phenomenal. And I sat there thinking, wow, there's only like, nine of us in the room and, and and she's got a great presentation it's too bad there's not a hundred people here uh to hear all this great information so uh i think that would be good okay good any other mary did you have something too Go ahead. Just, my last thing is i sent the um the the commission listing out and i just I always send it out and I never ask if anybody has any updates to their phone number, email address that you want to add. Uh, if anybody has anything you'd like me to add, if you just let me know now, or you can send me an email and I'll update the list. It's just, uh, it's our contact for everybody. So um, I just wanted to let you know it's there to review. And if you have anything you'd like to change, please let me know. Great, thank you. Then I just thought of something. Um, yes, Jennifer. 
Um, some of you know, I'm part of a veterans writing group out of the Russell Library down in Middletown. And uh, the Canton Library has asked us to do a presentation. We've, we've often gone to libraries around the state pre-COVID with presentations. And now we're, we're this is going to be on Zoom. Um, it's going to be uh, April 12th, but I'll let I'll probably send out an email to everybody just just to give the details if you want to tune in and uh, hear our presentation. I mean, we're all Vietnam vets at this point. We lost um, a Korean War vet uh, a few months well last year, um, so it's mostly Vietnam, but people who have written essays and there is um, there's a video one of the uh, members of the group um, has put together a video that's phenomenal about his his time in Vietnam so uh, just stay tuned I'll share information about that great April 12th April 12th at 7 p.m great thanks Jennifer anybody else uh, yeah, this is Rick. I just want to let some of you know that 60% uh, of most of our veterans organizations today are basically made up of uh, Vietnam veterans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're, we're older, older people now. <laughs> well, we, we are, we are the Cami wave, which the World War II vets were referred to as the khaki wave, but uh, right. Yeah. The DAV did some did some uh, stats, and they found out that ma the majority of uh, uh, organizations, veterans organizations, are sixty percent are Vietnam or Vietnam era vets. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's good to keep in mind, especially as we think about how we reach these individuals and and what their age brackets are. And, and so on too, and right. what their needs are. Yeah. Mm. Okie doke. Well, anybody else? Okay. Well, hearing none. Um, I think we had a good, good meeting. Very efficient. Got a lot done. I appreciate everybody coming in and spending the night in uh, in front of their computers. Um, thank you all, and, and thank you, Mary, for hosting. As always, and Chris, Officer Flores, thanks for joining us. Please tell the thank chief we're, we're doing our jobs. <laughs> we're right. on duty. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Second to motion. Adjourn. All right. I got, uh, we'll say Frank and Rick on that one. And we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We'll see Have you in good April. Good evening. Thank you. Bye. Good night, all. Get it for Bye -bye. Good night. Yeah, see you. Well, Frank. Yeah. Okay. Doug, are you still on? Bye. Yes, yes. Hey, it's Officer Flores. What uh what date are you guys looking to meet in April? Um, so our for our retreat date? For it's... I'm sorry, for the meeting. I'm sorry. For yeah, for April for the meeting. Nice. So our thirteenth. Yeah, it's uh April thirteenth. Okay. It's uh, usually the second Wednesday of each month. Okay. Uh, so and, and we're time. looking at to possibly doing it uh, in person. Yes. Yeah. We okay. we are going to do it in person unless the COVID okay. situation gets worse. We'll be in person at the fireside room over at uh, Pitkin Community Center. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right, Doug. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks again, all. Bye. See you in a few. Yeah, give me a chance to have dinner.